In this video, we will be looking at factorizing single brackets. Now, you may have seen my expanding single brackets video. This is the exact opposite. Rather than taking it out of brackets, we want to put it into brackets this time. This does have some uses, but especially at GCSE, it's more so just a skill to be able to do. So when we are expanding double brackets, there is often a number on the outside that is common with both of the numbers within the brackets. So this time we need to look for a number or a letter that is common in both terms. So a term is for example 2x or 4 in this case. Now if we take a look at the two numbers we've got here, we've got a 2 and we've got a 4. Both of those numbers can be divided by 2. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So this is how you always want to set up your factorising questions. So you put your 2 on the outside. And then you think, if I divide this by 2, what am I left with? So 2x divided by 2 is simply going to leave you with an x. And you do exactly the same for the second term, the 4. If I do 4 divided by 2, that is going to leave me with a positive 2. And that is it. That is your final answer. Now, the good thing about being able to do both factorising and expanding, whichever type of question you have it enables you to double check your answer. So if you are factorising a question, putting it into brackets, if you know how to expand that bracket back again, you can actually check your answer because it should take you back to the original question. So if we use those clause that we learnt, so 2 to the x and then 2 goes to the 2, and we want to multiply these. So 2 multiplied by x gives us 2x, and we've got 2 multiplied by a positive 2, which is going to give us positive 4. And you can see that that, in fact, does make the original question. So our answer must be right. OK, let's have a look at question number 2 now. So 3x squared minus 9x. So exactly the same principles apply. We look at the numbers and think, is there any number that goes into both of these? And we can immediately see there is a 3. Now this time we also have a letter that is common in both. So we've got an x squared, or you can imagine it as kind of two x's, because it's 3xx. X. And we've also got an x with the 9. So out of this we can take another x on our outside of the bracket. And again you want to set up your bracket just like this. If we were to take this 3x away or divide it by the first term, what will we be left with? This can be quite hard to imagine without much practice at first. So if we take our first term, 3x squared, we can write that as 3xx, x, because just like in algebra, if we have two things next to each other, that means they are multiplied together. And x times x makes that x squared, so it's exactly the same thing. And imagine we've got a 3x. Now you can see that 3 divided by 3 is just going to give us 1, and a lot of the time in algebra we can just ignore 1s because they don't mean anything, and the x's can cancel out. So that will leave us with just the x. So x goes on the inside of the bracket. You can also see here that we have a negative. So this is going to be a negative here. And again, if you set up your last term 9x and we put the 3x underneath, straight away we can see the x's are going to cancel and 9 divided by 3 gives us 3. So 3 is going to be there. And just like with the first question, because we know how to expand those brackets, feel free to double check this in your own time just to make sure that it works and that it's the right answer. OK, question number three now. Our final question. This time is a bit of a step up. You can see we've got three terms here. So we've got 4xy plus 2y minus 10y squared. So having three terms definitely does make it a little bit harder because you've got a lot more to consider. But again, if we break it down into numbers and then each individual letter, it should be simple. So just like before, take a look at each of these numbers. Which number can we divide into each of these? So 4, 2 and 10, we can immediately see 2 divides into each of those. So outside the bracket, we're going to have a 2. Now, we've got an x here, but we don't have an x anywhere else. So to be able to put something on the outside of the bracket, you have to have that letter in every single term. But you can see here, we don't. 
However, we do have a y there, a y there, and two y's here. So we can, in fact, take out one y from all of those. So two y goes on the outside of that bracket. Okay, so look at this first term and set up your tables if you want, just like we did in the second question. So we have 4xy and 2y like this. Immediately we can cancel those out. And 4 divided by 2 gives us 2. And you can see this x is carried through. So that leaves us with 2x. The second term we can see we've got a positive here. So we take our positive and put it there. 2y divided by 2y, because they're exactly the same, that is just going to leave us with 1. And again, if you were to write this out, I can show you how that works. So just like we talked about before, we divide the two numbers. 2 divided by 2 is 1, and the y's will cancel. So that leaves us with this 1 here. And finally, we've got a negative 10y squared. And we want to divide that by a 2y. So 10 divided by 2 is 5. y squared take away y. Now, just like before, we can write that instead as y, y. One of these y's will cancel out, and this last y will carry down to there. And that is a negative. That's really important to notice. So we have minus 5y as the last one. And again, that would be our final answer. Feel free to check it out by expanding it out and making sure we get the original question again. But apart from that, thank you for watching, and I hope that helped.